I want all of you to know that Xenoblade Chronicles is my favorite video game series of all time. That's why I've started a project doing a lore analysis on each chapter for Xenoblade 3 on this channel. However, with the recently leaked information from the art book, the creator of Xenoblade, Takahashi-san, has officially confirmed the potential validity of my lore theory, without spelling out every little detail, of course. Unfortunately, this means Takahashi-san is forcing my hand to explain this theory that I was saving up for chapter 6 and 7, that I was planning on doing as a part of my analysis. Meaning, if you have not finished Xenoblade 3 in its entirety, you won't understand this theory. Not only you need to finish it, but also heavily ponder the implications of Future Redeemed and its connection to Xenosaga series. In fact, even within the Xenoblade lore community, this is a highly complex and sophisticated understanding of Xenoblade 3's lore. So before we start, I want to lay the foundation and set the tone with a direct quote from Takahashi-san himself. Regarding the world of Ionios, rather the way origin works, there's a proper reason for it. In actuality, there's this and that reason, and that's why this world is constructed as such. That kind of thing. So for now, it's fine to think of it as basically a virtual world. That wouldn't be wrong. To put it simply, the administrator of that world could do anything. And in the main story of Xenoblade 3, that was it. That's the story. Kojima asks Takahashi, Noah threw it, the lucky seven into the ocean, at the end of the game. Was that okay? And Takahashi responds as follows. This conversation, how do I put this? It deals with the fundamental aspect of origin. Origin and Ionios. You can think of it broadly as a virtual world. It actually isn't the case, but this will be fine for demonstration purposes. And within that, there's a source code that's running. And as a way to express that, it can take the form of a sword, but also not. And Elvis was responsible for the general management of origin systems. As the administrator, Elvis was quietly watching for a while after origin started up. As this was happening, Zed, a partial administrator and collective conscious entity, starts doing things on its own. The story of Future Redeem starts when Elvis deems this unacceptable. Many things happen after that, but A ends up siding with Shulk and Rex. So there was no longer a general admin. And so Zed replaced that position. And that's why Zed can mess with the source code, making the human life span 10 years and observing it because it's amusing and things like that. Although the whole 10 year lifespan thing was a change made to the code prior to Future Redeemed. Basically, you can do a lot of things. He can be brazen about it. When thinking about what can be done to break the source code, this is where you use external powers. I believe this was stated in the story, but a kind of power that exists outside the flow will be necessary. In regards to what that power would be, it can be the power of the will of the young people living in this world. And regardless of Numa or Logos, it's the same kind of entity as Elvis, and thus an external factor from Zed's point of view. Therefore, combining these powers and retaking the world for ourselves, that would be the broad explanation of origin-related things. A, who was one person that was the core processor, as well as the possessor of the Monado, Shulk, and similarly, the possessor, no, partner of the same processor, Rex's Logos. These three sustain the world, and the main characters outside of those are lending their strength to the characters in Ionios. That is a structure. So when Noah throws Lucky 7 into the ocean at the end, he was pondering like this before throwing it. That was like saying thanks to the world. Thanks for everything. That kind of thing. The battle is over and a new world is starting. Thank you. And thus it is liberated. Return to the world. It was returned to origin. The people of the city, their life doesn't exist in the original two worlds, and yet they still exist despite the origin being something like a memory machine that collected data from both of the worlds. This is in fact a suggestion that the two worlds will become one, and that these people will absolutely be born in that future. That's the structure, so yes, Gondor and Monica, they will be reborn in this new world. Now, all of this is the fundamental paradigm shift of my theory. 
I need you to pay attention to how clearly Takahashi-san is linking the fabric of Ionios, the reality that our inhabitants exist in, being intimately connected to Origin and Zed on a metaphysical level. Origin, Zed, and Ionios are not different things. They're all intimately linked. In my interpretation, which I'll elaborate soon, Ionios is not the physical planetary collision paused at midpoint by Zed frozen in time, as majority of the lore community mistakenly assumes. Rather, Ionios is a patchwork reality made up completely of Zed's construction using the half-baked data assimilated by Origin before complete annihilation of the planets in a dimensional shift which Future Redeemed Ending directly confirms as Bionis and RS vibrates into material existence from another pocket dimension using the memory landmark Origin has physically stored before collision. But let's not put the cart before the horse, I'll explain everything from the start. This is similar to a virtual reality as Takahashi says, but also not exactly. There is a reason why Takahashi added that caveat. Not exactly. Although a virtual Ionios is a good analogy for it, that's not the whole story. It's not just a computer program inside Origin like a video game. I need to explain this from the beginning. Literally. From the very beginning cutscene of the game. As we all know, the worlds of Bionis and Arrest are yearning for each other, like plus and minus, the antimatter collision of physics. In the world of Xenosaga, on what is currently named as the Lost Jerusalem, when Klaus desired to ascend to godhood by going forward with the conduit experiment, the Earth was split into two in Xenosaga's universe. Bionis and Alrest, Xenoblade 1 and 2. These two planets have generated with oppositional charges, as Nia says, yearning for each other. But why? Why would they yearn for each other? Elden Ring has a great item description for it. As the law of regression states, all things yearn eternally to converge. The single Earth, lost Jerusalem, was split into Bionis and Alrest, and now the duality wants to revert back to its non-dual existence again. The polarization is inherently destabilizing and especially after Klaus's death in Xenoblade 1, the god of this reality so to speak, the two parts of Klaus, which exists in Bionis and Alrest, perish, meaning the worlds he created need to merge and destroy each other as well. In the beginning cutscene of Xenoblade 3, we are witnessing this moment of initial collision of the planets right before Origin's virtual creation of Ionios. But how does this reality come to be? For that, I need to explain who the main antagonist, Zed, is. Using Anto's processor as a CPU to generate Ionios, he is the personification of humanity's primal fear and the most primitive emotions. One of the core emotions Zed personifies is what is called fear, but most importantly, desire and aversion that is also discussed in Buddhism. More specifically, the desire for existence and the aversion to non-existence in the third path of Buddhist stages of enlightenment. And the resulting fear in regards to the collision of the planets shakes Zed to its core. Zed is humanity's collective fear. He fears that Origin may not be able to properly reboot the worlds. The conscious-like entity representing the dark side of humanity fearing this collision so much so that it created this reality of Ionios to prevent total annihilation. The Mobius on the other hand being his servants who similarly embody that selfish aspect of humanity, given a new lease on life as an eternal being after living their human lives in Ionios. Once the suffering of life is too much to bear, like Yoren and Shania, Zed offers them the chance to escape this human suffering by becoming a Mobius and ruling this reality together. As we can see in the beginning cutscene, the time stops and freezes, right before the planet starts the physical collision. This is very, very important. This moment is the snapshot of memory landmark Origin is saving. All the material and immaterial souls are being sent to Origin with the intention of after Bionis and Ares completely annihilates each other, Origin will create this new reality 
the Earth using the light and energy that gets produced by this explosion. This light and energy will enable the creation of Earth that includes not just Bionis and Ares data, but also the people of the city, the new births of Ionios, Gondor, Monica and everyone else, their data will also be reincarnated and added to Origins construction. Now the question is, what Zed did to throw a wrench into this process Origin was supposed to do? Remember how I told you the time stopped for a moment when Origin took a snapshot of reality? Like taking a screenshot so that Origin knows what exactly to recreate when the worlds annihilate? The key information of that snapshot resides in this scene in the base game. This is that exact snapshot freezing moment with an origin source code. The states of people, the world, the objects, everything was saved at this exact moment. In the beginning cutscene after this origin save state, the physical planets continue their inevitable collision. However, before the collision ends and complete annihilation occurs, Zed creates a backdoor, and with the amount of light and energy that has been produced by the partial collision of the planets, he creates a plank-sized black hole. And within its event horizon, he creates Origin's half-baked creation of Ionios. Existing of Bionis and Ares data, it's saved, and doing so in a pocket dimension. Leaving the physical Bionis and Ares to their fate, they completely collide and annihilate each other leaving nothing behind, which is precisely why at the end of Future Redeemed, as Mio and Noah is running towards each other, while Origin is recalibrating the virtual Ionios to where the physical memory landmark it stored, and realize that we're not seeing material planets in space, because they're arising from another dimension. While Mio and Noah is running towards each other in this scene, Origin is booting the physical save states with invincible vibrations from a plank-sized black hole slowly recongealing back into physical Bionis and Arrest just before the collision, just as the snapshot moment that it saved in its memory. Now that Zed is no longer a threat after the ending of Xenoblade 3, the two planets merge and completely annihilate each other only to be recreated as Lost Jerusalem, the Earth. The duality has reverted back, successfully, to its non-dual form. With the new births of Ionios, the city people, added into this memory landmark, now this new reality can be created with the complete collision of the planets, using the light and energy that results from it. Remember in Xenosaga, the lost Jerusalem was set to shrink down to a Planck scale. Origin boots back up simultaneously with the events of Xenosaga 3. And precisely because of this reason do we see Cosmos falling down onto this planet of lost Jerusalem. All thanks to the efforts of Noah and Mio and countless others, Takahashi connects both Xenosaga and Xenoblade in a genius manner paving the way for Xenoblade 4. Fundamentally, memories and feelings are but tecton extras and afterthought. Oh, they are as sheep. You are simply deceiving yourselves, wishing to divine some meaning from something that is devoid of it. Why are you doing this? What's your goal? Merely the betterment of life for Mobius. What? For such is Zed's humble desire. Zed? It is Zed who wove the fabric of this world. Consequently, we, who are his avatars, enjoy powers beyond mortal ken. The gift I was imparted is the creation of flame clocks. Must I say more? I hold the life of every soldier in the very palm of my hand. And because Zed feared the complete annihilation, the assimilation of souls Origin attempted to do was not complete. Certain beings like Nopons were outside the flow, as Takahashi says in this quote. Their data was not completely assimilated by Origin, they are ageless and eternal in this reality. After all, if Ionios was the physical intersection of the planet stopped by Zed by some magical, unexplainable powers, 
Ionios being different to Origin, then the fact of planets reverting back, going backwards that we observed in the base game would be completely meaningless. After all, time flows forward. The point of Origin was to reboot the states of the world after the collision into a new existence. So when the time continues after Origin boots up, no longer infected by Zed, the time needs to flow forward. The collision of the planets need to complete and then Earth needs to arise immediately. But as observed by both Noah and Mio running towards each other, in the future redeemed ending this exact separation of the planets is observed on the particle wave scale. Ionios, which is Origins making, is actively creating the physical states of the planet it saved in its system after Zed's defeat. This time no intervention will occur and the plan will go smoothly. Creating Bionis and Arrest in a physical form from its dimension back to the saved snapshot in this garden, recongealing back into Xenosaga's universe which is why we see Cosmos falling down at the end credits. This right here is a mind-bending narrative that has been cooked for more than a decade, an absolute masterpiece by Takahashi-san. But you might have a question, how is it possible for life and existence to ensue in a black hole, even if Origin is generating that using stored virtual data? First of all, this has a sound scientific basis, at least in theory. Black holes are regions in space where an enormous amount of mass is packed into a tiny volume. This creates a gravitational pull so strong that not even light can escape. In Xeno Saga, the status of Ronle Chateau was on the Planck scale. A location we know for a fact to be a part of Lost Jerusalem is a clear hint of how this Planck scaled black hole was created by Zed, storing the information of Bionis and Arrest. Now let's consider the Planck scale. The proton is about 100 million trillion times larger than the Planck scale. Physicists don't actually know what goes on at the Planck scale, but they can speculate. The Planck scale is the universal limit beyond which the currently known laws of physics break. In order to comprehend anything beyond it, we need new, unbreakable physics. What that does is to use this enormous energy that gets released when the part of the physical collision completes. This creates a space-time curvature where an invincible Planck-sized black hole that gets created in a pocket dimension. As a result of this, time stops at the event horizon of the black hole, but only as seen by someone outside the black hole. This is because any physical signal will get infinitely redshifted at the event horizon, thus never reaching the outside observer. Someone falling into a black hole, however, would never see time stop. Ionios means eternal for this reason, and why the time is frozen can be explained because of this black hole's effects. However much Noah and Mio do not see time stopping inside their reality, that's not the case outside of their reality. They could have lived in Ionios for a very short while, but millions of years could have passed outside of this reality. That's why the antimatter annihilation events are happening slowly but surely. Zed's patchwork reality within the event horizon is only temporarily shielded by the time being frozen. The principle of entropy in physics still eats away at this reality you can't completely run away from it. Black fog is a representation of this primal force. The planets that should have collided and destroyed each other, if not for Zed's intervention, are chipping away at this reality. In fact, this black hole is observed in the event horizon in the final boss of Future Redeemed. This is not some accident. We see the moon and the event horizon. It is obvious Ionios is exactly at the location Earth is in. In other words, Lost Jerusalem. In theory, if the black hole has a lot of mass, at least about 1.6 multiplied by 108 times the mass of the sun, and rapidly spinning, then it hosts a habitable zone just barely above the event horizon, where the cosmic microwave background lights peaks in the UV part of the spectrum. Hot, but not terribly. Any closer, and the planet would be destroyed by extreme gravitational forces, and any farther and the cosmic microwave background would be too cold. But in that narrow band, that's exactly where Ionios exists. 
This is how Zed creates the world of Ionios using Origin. The planet would have to orbit at nearly the speed of light, experiencing a time dilation factor of thousands, meaning that for every second that goes on in Ionios, hours would slide in Xenosaga's universe. And this is my overall building blocks of the metaphysics of Ionios. I still want to talk about how Rex, Shulk and the origin timeline of Ionios works, how the origin assimilation works, Malos that resides in Anne's Blade, and Dimitri Yuri of connections which directly ties it to Xenosaga, but I want to keep this video to focus on the metaphysical analysis of Xenoblade 3 that also explains how the virtual-like nature occurs Takahashi-san is officially confirmed. Now, if you do want me to go further into this analysis, give it a like and subscribe to support the channel and let me know if you have any questions you want me to answer. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.